welcome to another interesting edition of the Market Review, where we discuss developments in the financial and capital market as it affects the economy. Today, we'll be looking at the fixed income market and part of that, the activities in the debt uh, capital market. We want to look at how leveraging the debt capital market will support Nigeria's economic stability, which is very critical at this time as the country continues on the trajectory of recovery uh, from the past recession. Critical to see how this market is supporting the economy. With me to have this conversation is Mr. Oladipo Ajayi. He's the head of fixed income Dex for Chapel Hill Denham. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Oladipo. Thank you very much for having me on this morning. Yes, thank you very, very much. And before we begin this interesting conversation, let's take a look at what happened last week in the capital market, some just key updates that I want to give you. First, the Security and Exchange Commission hosted its second capital market committee meeting for the year 2021. It was an opportunity to discuss the 10-year capital market plan, amongst others, the implementation process of the FinTech Roadmap, the Commodities Trading Ecosystem Roadmap, as well as other salient matters as it affects the capital market ecosystem. It was chaired by the Director General of the Security Exchange Commission, Mr. Lamido Yuguda. Also last week, the International Organization of Securities Commissions, IOSCO, published the thematic note that examines the behavior of exchange-traded funds during the COVID-19-induced market stresses, drawing on market data and observations that were gathered at the course of the first half of the year 2020. You can get all those updates if you log on to www.proshareng.com. We cover the markets across all boards. We'll take a break and when we return, we'll continue this interesting conversation. The ProShare mobile app, your non-stop access to financial and economic information. With the ProShare app, you can customize your preferred news and videos. You can also get access to latest financial and economic news. Watch videos related to business, economy, financial markets and lots more. The ProShare app gives you in-depth market stats from the NSC, FMDQ and NASD. That's not all. You also get real-time alerts. The ProShare mobile app. Information at your pace and in your space. Welcome back. If you're joining us, it's the market review. And today we're looking at the fixed income market and uh, drilling down to the debt market activities, how it can be leveraged to support Nigeria's economic stability. With me to have this conversation is Mr. Ladipo Ajayi. He's the head of fixed income desk, Chapel Hill Denham. So let's first begin with the big debate that occurred last week. And this were concerns over Nigeria's status in the International uh, Debt uh, Development Association, I meant to say. Uh, the World Bank report was cited by publication. And there were concerns from the initial publication that Nigeria was among the top 10 uh, high-risk uh, uh, debt nations. But the Debt Management Office reacted to this in clarifying this and just want to say just a few things that uh, it highlighted from it. According to the Debt Management Office in its response, uh, it said that uh, IDA loans, International Development Association um, loans, are typically for tenors of 30 to 40 years. Uh, grace period is there, moratorium or principal repayment of 7 to 10 years and service fee of only 0.75%. It also noted that the highly concessional nature of the IDA loans uh, satisfies the requirement of the provision of Section 41 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2007, which is that the government at all tiers uh, shall only borrow on concessional terms with low interest rates and then uh, with a reasonably long amortization period. The cost of the IDA loans, DMO said, which is the service fee of 0.75% is considerable low, thereby moderating the cost of debt service. In, in essence, it was trying to say that, look, it's no cost for alarm. The publication must have uh, misinterpreted what the World Bank said. And it went on to say that, yes, our IDA debt stock as of June 30th, 2021, was $11.7 billion. I, I, I believe we must have gone through that. But in, in a nutshell, as an analyst in the market, are we in a very stable level having that debt stock of $11.7 billion, uh, considering the initial concerns that we raised? Thank you very much. Um, on, on the subject matter, uh, the issue at hand is that when I when I saw the headline on the Punch newspaper, uh, I immediately knew that there was a misconception somewhere 
because uh, what actually um, the World Bank was trying was trying to say was actually different from what um, the interpretation that the front newspaper gave to it. And if you actually read um, the news front newspaper for for Friday, you will notice that uh, it was actually the backtrack on on the, on the analysis of, of the information. Since I speaking, he um, is not talking about the capacity. Of, of the country to actually service it. Uh, to be realistic, um, if we look at uh, our current debt to GDP ratio, we are still around circa 30 percent. And uh, but the challenge that's actually uh, affecting the current currently is the cost of servicing this debt when you compare it to revenue. And uh, that's one of the reasons why the government should find a way to actually deepen um, the revenue and their revenue generating capacity. And um, uh, I guess when I saw sometimes last week when uh, was published that uh, we are trying to uh, bring back um, uh, foreign government roads. He, he sent a signal to me that, oh, maybe is that's one of uh, the ways to actually for that deep in the revenue generating capacity of the government. Because society speaking, we need to do that because when your cost of servicing debt, it's, um, it's just um, some basis points um, from the total revenue generated, the cost for alarm. But when you look at um, the, um, the decision of the government around the high day fund, I think it's actually a very reasonable one. Because one thing is that um, the tenor of the loan is long enough uh, to give you opportunity to actually um, be able to deploy the fund more and start getting reaping the dividend uh, from, from the investment. And also, if you look at the moratorium period, it's about seven to 10 years. So what that means is that when you get the fund, you have seven to 10 years before you start paying back on such funds. Imagine you assessing such funds for the best project. It means that um, people would have started enjoying the dividend of the of the project before you start paying that on, on, on that obligation. And at the same time, if you look at the cost of that loan too, uh, I'm sure it's one of the cheapest uh, source of funds that you can talk of globally because it's just about seven five basis points. And that is uh, and uh, I think it's a reasonable one because what that would do to to the economy is that uh, it will further the crowd the local market. Imagine the government coming to raise. 11.7 billion in the local market. What that would mean to the corporate organizations means that they will not be able to access the fund. Just telling them that they should just uh, find their base. <laughs> exactly. So, so what that would mean to corporate organizations is that they will not be able to raise fund locally. So when they cannot raise fund locally, they will have to actually have, approach banks and getting fund from banks will be more expensive. And the end result is that it will translate to higher cost of output. At the end of at the end of the day, what that would mean is that their production, uh, their product may not be able to compete with their global uh, co competitor. Yeah. So all those things actually counts as they, when you look at them um, in, in detail. I think um, it's just a misconception on, on the part of Punch, and they've come out to actually backtrack on, on the information. Yeah, definitely, it's it's very clear. The reason why because we know that our, our, our media, of uh, course. Um, uh, punch and amongst the, the leaders who have continued to provide very incisive information to uh, the public. And yes, like you said, the background on that. But the major issue I, I wanted to point out is what you've raised now, uh, which is the fact that, yes, the IDA loan, the debt stock is $11.7 billion, but we must address the cost of servicing our debt. It's a very important thing. And you said we should deepen our revenue base. So uh, that's something to think on, which is very important for our policymakers. But let's look at the debt market size. Um, last month, according to the uh, ProShare Capital Market Service Report, Nigerian Capital Market Service Report for July, it showed that the uh, FMDP debt market size was 24.18 trillion uh, naira in terms of uh, the, the value. Now, that is now 39% of the total capitalization of the Nigerian uh, market, uh, capital market ecosystem. And uh, if, you've, if you've seen the trend, it's been a lot of activities from the corporates. I mean, just to mention some few of them. Uh, Dan Gote just uh, last week uh, had an activity in, in, the, in the market. CNI Leasing have done uh, several rounds. Co Nation uh, Merchant Bank, Fitson, Nova Merchant Bank, several other uh, corporates have really been uh, engaged in the market. Like you rightly said, we don't need a situation where the corporates or private sector is crowded out. So now we're seeing that rally. And my question is is this rally? going to be sustained? Uh, and what are the um, factors that will sustain this? Yeah, um, for, for, thank you very much for that. Uh, for any market, what actually drives market is the depth of the market. The depth of the market is very key. 
because uh, even when investors are coming to any market, they consider the depth of the market, they consider the liquidity of the market, and they consider the assurance for commission of trades. Those are some of the characteristics of a very good market. And um, precisely speaking, I will give kudos to FMBQ for a great job well done. Um, because if you compare from when they have started, when they start with the inauguration of FMBQ and now, they've do, actually done a good job. They've been able to transform our debt market ecosystem. Yeah, debt market. Even the extent of the trading market of, of the debt market, they've been able to open the market where uh, there's price discovery. You understand me? So I, I think it's actually a very good job for them. All. And one thing they've also been able to do is that they've been also, also, also been able to actually bring a lot of corporates into the market. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Just you, you highlighted some of the corporate corporates. You mentioned Dangote Cement, you mentioned Nova, and I will mention MTN, MTN CP, both of both and MTN bonds as well. And what that has done to the market is that he, he has been able to make um, he open up the market. And also, um, local investors now, they are able to actually be part and parcel of this institution. Mm -hmm. And um, they are also part of, not only in, in that form, they can also benefit from the, um, from the returns of some of these institutions. Imagine um, um, MTN. So you know that even by subscribing to the data, by buying airtime, you can also benefit in form of return on your, tip, on your commercial paper, return on, on the fixed income instruments as well. So it's, it's actually a very good one. And um, FMDK, they've done a very good job in, in that form. And I think uh, what that will do to the market is that it will, this will open doors for more corporates to actually come into the market. Because um, you cannot compare when you actually have, approach a bank for a loan. Um, what that means is that it's as a single individual. Uh, the bank can wake up one day and say, oh, MPR, MPC has increased MPR. So as a result, they are increasing uh, your cost of um, of low of, of fund. Uh, but when you compare that in when you come to market to raise like a bond or a commercial paper, it's fixed. And uh, it's not only that you have a lot of uh, people that you actually uh, obliged to rather than one single individual. So um, with all these advantages, uh, I think um, this will actually lure uh, many corporates into the market. And um, most of those uh, people in the fintech uh, in world as well, they might also leverage this opportunity Instead of raising money outside the country, they can also come into the market and raise money locally because there's a lot of liquidity in this market and they're, they're looking for investment destination. So they can also leverage the, the, the depth of this market to actually raise funds uh, for, uh, for their business transformation. Okay, Mr. Ladipo, I, I noticed that you took the opportunity to pitch the market to the young, uh, the fintech firms that are evolving uh, and they should also leverage course. the market. <laughs> all right, okay. So it's all about developing Nigeria. So of course we can yeah. we can make that exception there for our markets, but let's take a look at the outlook. I mean, there's a lot that will really shape that. You just mentioned one of them, the um, interest rate environment. Uh, do you see the Central Bank of Nigeria sustain this um, retention of rates as it continues to watch the economy, winning on inflation, and also looking at growth as we, we started with that uh, trajectory? Yes, um, on, on that front, I think uh, we might likely see uh, a silent emphasis throughout the throughout the year. And uh, my, my view is premised on the fact that um, growth is still very much uh, edgy. Um, and, uh, and at the same time, um, we've seen inflation actually uh, uh, retrace for three consecutive months. And, um, and um, if you look at um, the March uh, post FPC in March, uh, the CBN governor actually highlighted that uh, he expects um, inflation to start uh, retracing by May. But uh, if you see uh, the trajectory, he has actually started a month earlier. He started in April. And uh, what that will mean to, to, to the monetary policy guys is that that means they are doing the right thing. And also, we are not expecting um, any bikes in inflationary pressure um, because we are moving close to um, um, harvest season. And that normally, uh, based on precedence, we expect uh, harvest season to kick in, and that will actually uh, reduce the impact of inflationary pressure, uh, most especially from food, uh, food uh, inflation. So we don't expect any aggressive uh, uh, movement on the part of the monetary policy guys. Guys, because what that will simply mean is that it will further, it will further stiffen the economy of growth, and uh, which will also uh, affect and, um, every, every household in the country. And um, I think uh, the only concern would have been the, the um, subsidy removal. Um, but uh, based on the body language of what we are seeing, I don't think um, we are ready to do that uh, anytime soon. Yes, and I was going to ask around the um, euro bond because I know that the, the, we had a $6.1 billion uh, approval and of course of uh, 
um, borrowing. And so we will likely see some activities around that. How would that shape the, uh, the market in terms of the tranches that will be raised in the, the local market? Yeah, um, if you look at the, we've already started seeing the impact of the, of the, of the approved um, bill bond. Um, immediately the list of the advice that was released last week, uh, market start, the fixed income market start reacting to that. And um, um, fortunately, it's not only the euro bond that we are expecting that by, by the 23rd of this month, uh, we can actually draw down on the SDR and um, that's just about $3.4 billion. Yes. You understand? Um, and at the same time, um, the government can also issue euro bond uh, to the tune of from $3 billion to about $6.18 billion. So um, on average, let's assume the government is not even taking the whole lot side. They are doing maybe around $4 billion. That takes us to about $7.4 billion that we'll be expecting as inflow into the economy. And um, sincerely speaking, that's for me, I feel that this would have, that this would be a very good time for the uh, monetary policy, the most expensive CBM to actually harness the FX window. Um, mm -hmm. Because sincerely speaking, we know that um, um, the IE window is not the true rate of uh, value of Naira. And also the parallel market does not show the true picture of Naira. So what that simply means that the true picture of Naira falls in between uh, the 411 and the 500 that we are seeing in the parallel market. So I feel that sitting on that age level of info will give the monetary policy uh, guys the opportunity to actually harness the FX market and create liquidity at, um, at the fair value of Naira. Because one good thing about it is that um, at the fair value of Naira, um, a fake or pseudo demand will disappear at that particular level. Most speculators will actually run off the market at that particular point in time. So what that would do is that it would reduce the burden of supply of FX um, on the part of the, uh, the FX bank. And at the same time, that might actually lure uh, FDIs and FDIs to a market because at that particular point in time, they feel that um, FX is a free price and they are not exposed to any, 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 any uh, FX risk. And uh, also, I think for the euro bond, I think we need to take uh, the decision very fast. I think we are getting too late um, because if you look at uh, the inflation figure that was released um, in US, uh, it's about 5.4. Yeah, it's uh, rising. Uh, it's on a rising tide. And um, currently, if you look at inflation at 5.4 and um, return on the 10-year instrument still um, sub 2%, it tells you that something can happen anytime soon. So I think we need to actually uh, act fast before, because the tone of the Fed has changed. Um, they're already saying they are looking towards the end of the year if the momentum continues. So what that simply means is that uh, it's not impossible that we might likely see a rate hike if you are not very careful. So mm -hmm. we need to actually act fast to be able to actually take um, as much as we can take in the debt, uh, global debt market um, before the rates start going up. Yeah, we must take a lot that we can from the global debt market. In terms of the interest, the, the appetite of in investors to the fixed income market, uh, discussing with analysts previous uh, edition, he said, yes, yeah, it was very good for July, but August uh, seems a bit uncertain. Uh, what are the trends you're seeing in terms of that interest? Is it sustained or is it uncertain? I think the, the, the appetite for the market to actually take is still very, very much high there. Um, a lot of people want to come into the market, into the Nigerian market all the time. Most, many FBIs want to come to our market. But the FS crisis is uh, like a deterrent to them. But going through the European uh, instrument, it gives, it gives them uh, it's, uh, a very a very good ground for them to actually invest in Nigerian instrument. So we think um, it's, the appetite is still very much there. But the only concern is um, if you are not very careful, the rates you may, you may, mean, you may need to pay premium to actually get uh, people to actually come uh, for, for the instrument. Yeah, so, so uh, the FX uh, issue that you raise is a major concern that monetary policy should ensure that it manages yeah. effectively uh, at this time. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Okay. We, we, so we just think, we think that like uh, currently, for, for me, I feel that still uh, around 8% for, for a 30-year instrument, we can still get to for actually push that in the markets as we speak. So but imagine that uh, we wait until when the when Fed now take a decision. Uh, we, what that will simply means is that our eight percent may not likely fly again. So as a result of that, um, we need to act fast. That is just uh, my view on, on that front. Uh, and for our local investors, finally, in terms of those that are investing in the fixed income market, keeping faith, what would like to say to them this period as we look at uh, the remaining half of the year? Yeah, um, if you look at the remaining half of the year, there's all things that we need to consider. Um, yeah, for example, this month we are not expecting a lot of liquidity into the into the system. The only thing we are expecting is uh, 
um, like a complement, so we include about 60 billion. Um, however, um, the information about uh, about the SDR and uh, and Eurobond um, actually is currently pushing momentum in the market as we speak. So we think that um, rates will likely trade sideways. Um, uh, we might actually see a bond yield touching um, around 12 percent, but I think we'll now be trading between 12 and 13 uh, percent throughout uh, throughout the year. Uh, because um, for September we are expecting close to 300 billion from coupon payment. For October we are expecting another 200 billion from from coupon payment. Those are liquidity that can actually put demand in the market. So and um, bearing on any other um, unforeseen circumstances, we think that market will actually trade sideways uh, throughout the end of the end of the year. Yeah, and I also know that uh, tomorrow 18th, that's um, Wednesday 18th of August, we have the auction. The Central Bank of Nigeria, on behalf of Debt Management Office, will be doing the auction again of uh, 150 billion naira. Uh, do you expect to see a rally in that point? Do you see much? Uh, uh, we think what we're expecting for tomorrow's auction is that we expect the market to be aggressive, um, and uh, we expect the auction to be to be oversubscribed, um, considering the uh, momentum that we're seeing from the market from last week. Um, we think that will also impact the market positively for those week, and as a result of that. Um, the demand will be actually be uh, will be it can be, uh, be as high as uh, two two percent cover for um, two hundred percent cover for 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 what is actually on on, on the issuance uh, calendar. So and as a result of that, the DMO would have the um, opportunity to actually sell as much as uh, as they want to. So I see DMO um, overselling, at that, but uh, I see the rate closing around uh, around twelve point eight for twelve point eight to thirteen percent for for the long end. Of the COP and um, for the 2036, uh, maybe around uh, 12.6 to around 12.8 is, is the band where I think that will likely close. And the, for the 2028, that will likely close around 12.2 to around 12.5. Very nice to hear. At least it's a good projection, and hopefully, uh, it will the rally continues and it's aggressive. Uh, it's been yeah. nice having this interaction, and uh, I would just like to take note of the fact that you said the Nigeria must take good advantage of the. Uh, global debt market, the euro bond, particularly with rising inflation in the U.S. If you yeah, if you watch if you concern. if you watch a poll last week, the Americans are saying they're not happy with the way the U.S. government is handling the inflation. So of course we need to really take exactly. advantage of the period. And you talked about the fact that the foreign exchange market, the monetary policy authority, also needs to do a lot in terms of stabilization. Yes, we know about the reforms, but the stabilization to bring that predictability, uh, because like you rightly said, FPI. And FDIs, we are not doing very well, particularly in the FDIs. I mean, it's been a yeah. long time we had the FDIs at the forefront of our capital importation. So definitely, a lot has to be done in, in terms of uh, the reform strategy there. And also the fact that, yes, liquidity is very key. You're encouraging uh, companies to come on board and leverage the market. So hopefully, yeah. I hope they get the signal and uh, take advantage of what's happening in uh, the local debt market. But thank you very, very much, Mr. Ladipo Ajay, Head Fixed Income, uh, Desk of Chapel Hill Denham. Very interesting and refreshing conversation to understand what's happening and how uh, leveraging the debt capital market can help uh, economic uh, stability at this time. Thank you once again. Very nice conversation. And hope to have you subsequently to look at the year, yeah. hopefully, uh, in terms of the fixed income market. Thank you once again. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. That will be all for this conversation around the market review. But if you have questions, suggestions, or comments around looking at what's happening in the debt market, how it's being leveraged to support Nigeria's economic stability, send your questions, views, or comments to otobasi.abasekongaproshareng.com. That's displayed on the screen already. And also, if you want to get all the information on what's happening in the fixed income markets, log on to our website, www.proshareng.com. Go to the right hand of the bar. Scroll down and check for fixed income. When you click on fixed income, you will see all the latest stories around the developments in the market, particularly even tomorrow's auction of our 150 billion naira cutting across the various tenures carried out by the Central Bank of Nigeria on behalf of the Debt Management Office. And we'll be bringing you updates on that, the implications and impact of that. Also, the Eurobond activities and every other activity that concerns our market. We have them all captured for you. Not just the fixed income uh, market, we have the equities market, we have the commodities market, and we also have the unlisted OTC market. That's what ProShare brings for you. All of them in one hub. Get them all captured. And also, if you uh, would like to continue to have 
uh, further interactions with us, join our web uh, social media platforms displayed on the screen. We have them also uh, displayed there, and you can also, particularly the millennials, I know you like to be engaging in social media, so that's it for you to uh, be participating. Don't forget this period that as we continue to ease out of the impact of COVID, the TED wave and the Delta variant concerns are there, so you need to stay safe. Thank you for watching, and let's make this happen next edition. Have a nice day.